Ken Pools, ExcelGuru.ca, has whooped a challenge on us, and it's snaky. And I'm going to show you the challenge and take you through my solution. I'm also going to cover some concerns. We've got our data, and we want to reward people who have multiple types of memberships, not multiple memberships. Susan has four transactions. She's in three different types of membership. We want to keep her in the solution because she's got more than one membership type. Contrast that against Claire. Claire has one membership type. That's why she's not in the solution table. I've got my solution table, and I'm about to add some new data, refresh, and see what happens. So new data, refresh. Now check it out. We've got Joe in here now because the new data brought in Marina and that matches up with his fitness club. So he's in the solution table. Ellen is somebody brand new who's got Marina and golf course. But look at Jim. Jim has Marina fitness club, but also pay attention. There's a Jim customer ID 5 and a gym customer ID 10. Two different gyms. Now let's think about how we're going to deal with this. When we're done, we want to see each of the right people's transactions, all of them. So even though there's two golf courses for Susan, we want to see those in the end. But in our middle step, we only are concerned that she's got a golf course a marina, a fitness club, right? So she's got three memberships, four transactions. We want to see the four transactions. So that means once we have isolated the people of interest, we want to take this raw naked table and do a merge. How do we do this? All right, I'm going to go data, queries and connections. All right, so of course we start with the source data, data, from table slash range, right? So I'm gonna go here and show you that there is nothing that I did, just a change type. So there's a source data, it's got date and time, change it to just date, there we go. Next, the query that decides who's got multiple units. So we start with the source data, change that type so that we have the date. Then group rows. So there's the group by. A grouped by customer, member, and ID. And did a count distinct rows. Okay. What that did for us was collapse the memberships. Next group again. I grouped by customer and customer ID and probably could have just done customer ID. And again, count distinct rows. Okay. Susan, customer one has three distinct memberships. We can see that clearly now. Jim five has one membership. Jim 10 has one membership. So we're not tripped up by two different people with the same name. Then we go filter out anything that's a one. Right, we do that here, uncheck the one, and that's what we have here. See, does not equal one, cancel. These are the people we want. Then finally, I reordered the columns. And then we merge and we're done. I will do that for you. Let me close and load this. Get data, combine queries, merge. I'm going to do multiple units up top, transactions on the bottom, we're matching up customer ID. I'm going to leave this as the left outer join, OK. Expand this table. I don't need customer ID and I don't need customer. Unclick this, OK. And then close and load. I can go back and get rid of that count column. Don't need that. 
Edit. Remove. Close and load. Ha. That's exactly what we wanted. So we can go back, add some more information. You know how we do it here. Got more data. Here we go. Refresh. Boom. Susan's fifth transaction is showing up. Claire shows up finally because she ordered the marina. Martin, the new guy, is not here. We have the solution. Thanks to Ken Pools for doing this. I'm going to leave you a link to the challenge and his blog post with the solutions because there were some other ones. There you have it. And I will see you in the next video.